find the length and width of a rectangle with area 7a and minimum perimeter. Let's go ahead and work through it very carefully. So we have a rectangle to work with in this problem. So maybe the first step is to draw a picture of the rectangle. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's uh, the rectangle. Good stuff. And I'll go ahead and call this x and I'll call this y. And that means that this is also x and this is also y. And let's go ahead and read the question again and figure out what we're supposed to do. So we're told that the area is 7a. So that means that x times y is equal to 7a. Because the area of the rectangle is you know, length times width. So x is the length, y is the width. So x times y is 7a. OK, good stuff. And we have to find x and y. But we're told that the perimeter needs to be as small as possible. So our goal is to minimize the perimeter. So let's go ahead and write a formula for the perimeter. So p of x, let's say it's a function of x, is going to be uh, the perimeter. So to find the perimeter, you just add up the lengths of all the sides. So x plus x, oh, plus y plus y. This is interesting. So now p of x is equal to 2x plus 2y. And the goal is to make this small. So we want to minimize, minimize this function. We have to make the perimeter as small as possible. So how do we do that? Um, well, we have to get rid of this y. Notice I wrote p of x here, and now here we have x and y. That's no good. So to get rid of the y, we're going to basically solve this for y by dividing by x. So we have y equals 7a over x. And now we're going to take this and we're going to plug it in here. So we have p of x equals 2x plus 2 times 7a over x. And now our goal is to make this as small as possible, which we can do using calculus. So a quick recap of how we set all this up. So you draw the rectangle, you write down what you're told, so x times y equals 7a, and then you write down what you have to do. You have to make the perimeter as small as possible. And what happens in these problems is you end up with two variables. So typically what you do is you use this other equation, in this case x times y equals 7a, to solve for one of them and plug it in. So now we only have x's. So now our goal is to make p small. Okay, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. This is p of x equals 2x plus, and 2 times 7a is 14a. So you have 14a over x. And again, the goal is to make p as small as possible. So to do that, we'll use the second derivative test. That means we'll take the critical numbers of this function and we'll plug them into the second derivative. And we're looking for a minimum, okay? So before we find the critical numbers though, we should rewrite this so we can differentiate it. So p of x is equal to 2x plus 14a. And then you bring this up and it becomes x to the negative one. All right, so now we're ready to make it small and use the second derivative test. So step one in the second derivative test is to take the first derivative and set it equal to zero. So p prime of x is equal to the derivative of 2x is 2. Here we get negative 1 times 14, so negative 14ax to the negative 2. And we want to set this equal to zero. Okay, we're looking for the critical numbers here. So this is really 2 minus 14a over x squared, and that's equal to 0. Right? We're looking for the points where the derivative is 0 or undefined. The derivative is undefined at 0, but you can't plug 0 back into p, so it's not a critical number. So all we have to do is solve this. So let's see, this is uh, negative 14a over x squared, and then you just subtract 2 like this equals negative 2. Let's multiply by x squared. If you do that, that puts you right here at negative 2x squared. And then divide by negative 2, going kind of fast. So we get x squared equals 7a. Take the square root, you get x equals plus or minus the square root of 7a. Well, you know it can't be negative because it's going to be the length of a rectangle. Um, so it has to be this. So this is our critical number. 
So that's actually going to be the answer, but we're supposed to check um, that this actually does give us a minimum. So to do that, we're supposed to take this and plug it into the second derivative. So this is our CN. So remember, the second derivative test says that you find the critical numbers and you plug them into the second derivative. If it's positive, you have a min. If it's negative, you have a max. So we've taken the first derivative. We found our critical number. Now we have to find our second derivative. So p double prime of x. The derivative of 2 is 0. Here we get negative 2 times negative 14. So 28a x to the negative 3. This is really p double prime of x equals 28a over x cubed. Okay, so now we're going to check this. We're going to see if this gives us a min or a max. So we're going to plug it in to our second derivative. So square root 7a. This is the part people always forget. Like, this is the answer. Like, this is one of the answers. So people often don't do this. It's really important to at least go through and verify. I mean, you're supposed to check um, that that this is going to be the answer, that this is going to give you a minimum. There are problems, but you might not see them, where you, where you get two critical numbers, and one works and one doesn't, but they're not common. So this is square root of 7a cubed. And this is going to be positive, right? Because, uh, yeah, it's positive. A is positive, so this is positive. A is an area, right? It has to be positive because we're told that the area is 7a, so the area can't be negative, so we know a is positive. So this whole thing is positive. So we have a min at x equals square root 7a. So this is going to give us a minimum. This is the length that's going to make uh, the perimeter small. To find the y value, all you have to do is go back to uh, x times y equals 7a. And then plug this in and solve. So let's do that. So you get square root 7a times y equals 7a. And then you divide by the square root of 7a. This is some funky math here. This will be fun. So you get y equals 7a over square root 7a. And that's actually just square root 7a. I said, how do you know that? Watch this. This is 7a to the 1 over 7a to the 1 half. <laughs> and you subtract the exponents. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to subtract. But that's just the square root of 7a. Boom. So there's our y. So we have our y and our x. They're the same. They're the same. So we get a square, right? So a square would give us the minimum perimeter. So quick recap from the beginning one more time. It says rectangle. So step one, draw the rectangle. Uh, and then write down x times y equals 7a. That part's pretty easy. Uh, they tell us the area is um, 7a. So x times y is 7a. We want the perimeter to be small. So this is the formula for perimeter right here. So now here it is right here. You say, okay, wait a minute, I'm stuck. Uh, there's a y here. So what do you do? You take your x times y equals 7a up here, and you solve it for y, and you plug it back in. Boom. Once you get here, all you do is use the second derivative test. That basically means you take the derivative, set it equal to 0. We did that. Boom. There's our critical number. And then you plug it into the second derivative. It's positive, so we have a min, so everything checks. That means x is definitely the answer. To find y, you plug it back into your original question. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.